Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you what our vegetable garden looks like in August, which is probably my favorite month in the garden. Everything is looking so lush and wild, it's almost like a jungle out there. We're harvesting so much food out of here every day, and a lot of things are also changing. We're switching out a lot of summer crops for fall crops. In this first bed here, we have a bunch of different peppers. So in the front, we have our Korean hot peppers, which are doing fantastic. They have been putting off so many peppers. It's almost like there are more peppers than leaves and we can't go through all of them, but I'm letting a lot of them ripen to red on the plant. And I'm going to pick them and dry them so that we can use them slowly because you really only need a couple of these because they're pretty spicy. Next to that, we have a couple of shishito peppers, which so far are the best pepper just because we have been able to harvest so many and a lot of the other ones are only just getting started. But same story with these guys, so many peppers per plant and they're so delicious. We are definitely growing these again next year. We have a couple of larger sweet peppers. So this is a giant kind of sweet pepper and it has some blemishes on it. I'm not really sure what that is, but hopefully the next ones look a little bit better. We also have some hot wax peppers here, and we've harvested a good handful of these so far. Our other hot peppers haven't been producing yet, so I've been using these in salsa. And then we also have a sweet banana pepper, and again, we've only harvested a couple of these, but it does look like a lot of those flowers are starting to set fruit up top, so hopefully we get a big flush soon. Around these peppers, I've popped in a bunch of different kinds of bush beans, mostly dragon tongue bush beans here, and we also have some purple ones, and those are starting to produce really nicely. I also popped in just a couple of burgundy okra plants. These were just a backup in case the ones in the back of our garden didn't do well, but those are coming up really nice as well. In the next bed, we have our Asian eggplants. And I also popped in a zucchini plant at the end where I pulled out a bunch of earlier bush beans, although that is not looking so good. It might be stunted, so I might pull that out soon. But the Asian eggplants are producing pretty nicely. The plants do look a little rough, but we have been able to harvest another flush of these. The other day we harvested probably five or six of them, which honestly even that amount of eggplants is probably more than we've ever grown because it's very hard for us to grow with all the flea beetles attacking these plants. And I also just have a couple of remainder dragon tongue bush beans around here as well that we're still harvesting from. I actually need to come back out here and spray these plants down with some neem oil. I think that the neem is a little more effective than diatomaceous earth against the flea beetles. It still doesn't get rid of them completely, but I did spray them about a week ago and I feel like that improved at least for a few days, so I'm gonna keep trying to do that. Here's another look at that squash. I might give it another week and see if it does anything before I decide to pull it out. And moving on to the next bed, on the edge we have a watermelon that is trailing off. It is just starting to put off some baby fruit, but nothing much to show there just yet. And we have our cattle panel, which last month was pretty empty, but this month it is really starting to fill out and it is such a pretty sight. On that side that's really filled in, that is mostly pole beans and also tomatillos. And on the other side that is still a little sparse right now, we have a cucumber plant and also a couple of tomato plants. At the base of one side of the trellis, we have a couple of different things. Here I've started to pop in a bunch of different brassicas. I believe these ones are broccoli. Looks like we have a silver slicer cucumber back there that is almost ready to harvest. And basically this is the season where anytime something is ready to be harvested and pulled out from the garden, I am immediately replacing those with fall crops that I've started indoors. On the other end of this bed, we have a couple more pepper plants. We haven't gotten anything off of these yet. They are just starting to set fruit, but the peppers really are just taking a little longer than usual this year. Here's a look at the tomato plants we have on the side of the trellis. I'm really enjoying trellising these indeterminate tomatoes up this cattle panel because these tomato plants can get so tall and the cattle panel is really nice and sturdy to be able to support them. We have some beautiful clusters of sun gold tomatoes here and these are just starting to ripen. In the next bed, we have a big patch of our peanuts which are exploding and doing awesome. They are loving this hot weather and the leaves just look so beautiful and healthy. They are not bothered at all by the heat and those flowers are starting to develop their pegs that go underground and form those peanut pods so that is something really cool and exciting. These plants really look like they're doing a lot better than when we planted last year, and last year we got a pretty good harvest, so hopefully this year is even better. 
We still have quite a bit before we're ready to harvest though. I'd say we still need at least another month for these. These are such a long season crop. But you can see those flowers and pegs forming from so high up the stem. I didn't realize that they could form those little runners so far up. And here's a closer look at the other side of the cattle panel trellis that has the tomatillos and pole beans. The tomatillos are putting off so much fruit and they just look so pretty. They kind of remind me of like Christmas ornaments dangling along there like that. And they have really exceeded my expectations as far as how tall they can get. They are taller than both of us now and I am so glad that they have the support of this cattle panel trellis to be able to grow up. We've got lots of beans forming here too. These are rattlesnake pole beans. I really love these beans. They're very productive and they grow really long and straight. I really love having this arch trellis here. It just gives you such a nice little shady spot in the garden to pick your beans. On the very corner here, we have a winter squash that's growing. This is actually a honey nut butternut squash, which is like a single serving, really sweet and delicious butternut. It's our first time growing it, but we have eaten it before and it's really good. And I'm so glad that this is doing well because if you followed along in the spring, we lost most of our winter squash this year to vine borers, but I planted these seeds a little bit later and it looks like those bugs have gone for the season for the most part and these are doing really well and starting to put off fruit which looks so cute and I'm so happy to see them. We found a few squash bugs here and there that we've picked off but generally so much better than the early summer. We also have some more sweet peppers back here. These are Ejvarsky peppers which were our favorite pepper last year so I had to reseed these after we had some of them die. So they're a little farther behind but they are starting to produce some peppers here now so I'm really happy to see that. We have just a couple of jalapeno plants that are in this pot and they're starting to produce peppers as well. So we're not gonna have as big a harvest as last year, but that's okay. By the way, the rest of this footage was taken the next day after we had a really big rainstorm. So if everything all of a sudden looks really wet, that's why. I am just so thankful for the rain because the garden really needed it. On the other side of the raised bed garden now, we have our other cattle panel trellis, which is completely filled in now. I just love this view. It looks like a tropical jungle and all those beans are hanging down and looking so magical. It is just such a beautiful moment in the garden right now. On the far end of the bed, we have a bunch of sweet potatoes that are vining off and they are looking beautiful and so healthy. The other day we actually noticed that there are some sweet potatoes popping out of the soil, which is so great to see that they are forming under there. We're still probably a few weeks away from a harvest, so it's good to see that there's stuff developing under there and I'm so excited to dig in and see what kind of harvest we get this year. Last month I had some pro-cut sunflowers here that have bloomed and I've cut them down and in any little space that I can find I've popped in some more brassicas so these here are brussels sprouts. This is our first time growing them so hopefully they do well and will grow and produce into the fall. On the other end we have another watermelon plant and this one actually has a pretty good sized watermelon growing there. This is probably the biggest one we have in the garden so far and I think it's gonna really plump up after this big rainstorm we just had. Here is the glorious long bean trellis that is completely covered. We have both the green and the red varieties and these have been producing for maybe about two weeks now and we're already completely overrun with beans. If you're looking for a vegetable that's easy to grow and produces so much in hot weather that's either humid or dry, this is definitely the one to grow. And again, I just love the little shady area this creates in our garden because we have a pretty full sun garden and on the days when it's like 95 degrees, it's nice to have just this little spot where you can stand under and have a little bit of rest. Look at all of these beans that we picked right before this video and there are still so many on the plant that are left to pick. The red variety is definitely a little less productive than the green one and at the end of this side of the trellis I also popped in another tomato plant. I believe this one is an artisan blush one. So far the production hasn't been too good for this variety but the flavor is really good and I'll show you another plant of this later on in the garden. Behind this trellis, I have this little hooped in area where I have some Napa cabbage. I just transplanted these in our onion harvest video recently and they've already like doubled in size. They're really loving this spot being protected under the fabric and also that arch trellis gives it a good amount of shade as well so it protects it from really hot weather. I think we also sewed some collars or something next to those as well. 
I had just a little corner of this bed that was empty so I popped in some carrot seeds and I've been doing this all throughout the garden. Anytime there's a small space where I can't plant something big, I've just been sprinkling in some carrot seeds so that we can have a little bit throughout the garden wherever we go. The next bed is our main tomato production bed and it has done so well this year. I have actually been keeping track and in this one bed where we have I think five or six plants, we've harvested over 50 tomatoes for a total of over 30 pounds. And that was just the first flush of tomatoes. We still have a bunch on here that are ripening now. The thing I like about these tomatoes is that a lot of the tomatoes ripen at the same time so that I was able to pick them all at once and preserve them. It's a lot easier to deal with them that way than having a plant that only ripens one tomato at a time. As I've been picking tomatoes, I've just been pruning off any of those lower branches and stems that no longer have fruit or need the leaves, just so that I can increase the airflow. And with that open space now there, I'm able to pop in a couple of cabbage seedlings in here. And we've also started sowing some radishes and carrots along here as well. At the end of this bed, this ground cherry plant is living its life. I can't believe how many ground cherries we've been able to get off of our few plants and I feel like they are only just now getting to their peak. We have a gallon of ground cherries in our house right now and I probably will have to make some jam or something out of them. We have a couple more plants on this last bed here and this trellis has been completely taken over with the cucumelons. You can barely even see that the trellis is under there anymore. These things have gone wild and they really are producing a lot. Unfortunately, we have given these a try and we are just not really fans of the flavor. Mostly we've been picking them to feed to the chickens, although I feel like they're not huge fans of them anymore either. I feel kind of bad, but we are probably going to be pulling these out sometime in the next week or so because really these plants are taking up a lot of space and we really need those spaces right now to put in other things, especially to get them in in time for the fall garden. These things have also gone so crazy that they're starting to take over a lot of the plants that they're next to. I have a tomato plant here, but the cucumelons have started to vine all over them and they're kind of choking them out. They've also made their way over to the calendula all the way on the other side of the bed as well as going into the lemongrass. So yeah, these things just can't really be contained. They go pretty crazy. Speaking of the calendula, a lot of this is starting to go to seed even though I've been harvesting so much. And I've gotten so much dried already that I'm starting to pull out a few of these plants. You can see here I've already pulled out one plant and I'll probably pull out another one or two. And I'm just going to leave a couple for the pollinators. And again, this is just going to open up a couple more spaces for me to plant carrots or brassicas that need to go in right now. Next to that, we have this mass of lemongrass, which is getting so huge. I absolutely love this plant. It's so pretty that I actually want to grow this for our front garden next year because it looks just like a landscaping grass and it was really easy to grow from seed. I've harvested and dried a few of the tops for tea, but I think it does take a while longer in order to develop those stalks that are thick enough to use for cooking. Moving on to this long bed to the side of our main raised beds where we have these two trellises. On this first one, we have our Asian gourds. These are the fuzzy melons and they are developing so nicely. We have this really nice big long one and there are a couple little babies that are popping up as well and starting to grow. This is a long variety of this fuzzy melon and I also have a plant of the round fuzzy melon next to that and that also has a couple of fruits on it. This one on the bottom is starting to produce a little bit of that like powdery white stuff on top and this is actually what helps these melons preserve for a really long time. So I guess they're getting close to ready. I'm not actually sure when they'll be ready to harvest. And we have another really big one growing up top as well. In the middle area, we have a bunch of flowers and this new one that started blooming recently is hyssop. Aaron actually picked a few of this to have for tea the other day and he said it tastes just like absinthe, which is not really my cup of tea, sorry for the bad pun. But I do think these make for really nice cut flowers and also the bees do really like them. On our other trellis, we have a few more tomato plants. These are just random ones that I had left over at the end of the season, so I just pop them in. So it looks like we have some sun gold here and we also have a speckled roman, which is more of like a paste plum tomato. Moving on to the back of the garden, which has all of our in-ground beds. The first bed on the right, we had our corn last month and we've harvested all of those and cut them down. And now they've been replaced with some more brassicas. So we have things like broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi. By the way, all of these brassicas that I've just popped in, these were all started in a video about a month and a half ago. So I'll link that down below if you wanna know the exact varieties that I'm growing for our fall garden. 
And again, I've made sure to cover these with some mesh to make sure the cabbage moths can't get to them and lay those little caterpillars that will eat up your brassicas. I also have a watermelon that's left over from when the corn was here and that's developing some few little baby melons, so I'm leaving that here. In the next bed, we've popped in some celery transplants. I think some of them got pretty beat up with the heat and the rainstorm that we had recently, but some of them still look okay, so hopefully we'll get some good ones out of there. On the other side of the bed, we have some more leftover tomatoes that I just popped in at the end of the season, and those are starting to put on fruit. Then we have another patch of peanuts, which is a little bit hidden under all of these weeds. These aren't doing quite as well as the ones in the raised bed for really a bunch of different reasons, but they do seem to be doing okay, so hopefully we'll get something out of there. On the other side, we have more sweet potatoes, which again, just aren't doing as well as the raised beds. And then we also have a couple of corn stalks that are growing. This is our second succession of corn, but it just didn't germinate super well, so we only have a few of those. The next bed, we have a little bit of an empty space. I'm not sure if I didn't plant it or just didn't germinate. And then we have another planting of bush beans. So this will probably be the last one for the season. And then I've also popped in a couple more zucchini plants. Since we didn't really get any earlier this year, I wanted to try it for the fall and it looks like they're doing a lot better. So far, no sign of bugs really yet and the plants are looking really healthy. So maybe this is just what we have to do from now on and not plant squash in the beginning of the season, but just wait till the end when those bugs have really gone away. It has just started to produce flowers, so hopefully we'll get some of that zucchini soon. In the next bed, we have a cattle panel trellis where we have just a bunch of different things growing here. We have some pole beans. These are more of those rattlesnake pole beans. And they're doing pretty well, even with not getting watered as much back here. We also have a bitter melon plant and we haven't harvested any of that yet, but I see the first one developing here that will be ready soon. And at the very end, we have a silk squash, which I think is related to the loofah, but we actually just eat these young, like zucchini. We have had the male flowers for a long time, probably almost like a month, and we've only just started getting those female flowers, so very soon we are going to have a lot of these. Once they start producing, they produce a ton. In our last bed, we have our okra. This has been a little bit of a struggle this year because they got mowed down by deer, but after I re-sowed the seeds and left them protected with mesh for a while until they got established, they're doing really nice now, and we've harvested just a few pods, but with all of the heat we've been having, I'm sure that these plants will start producing a lot very soon. We are almost at the end here. We're gonna move to the very last section of the garden. First, we have our asparagus bed and the plants are starting to put off some of their berries. Asparagus plants are so beautiful in the fall. The foliage gets to like yellow, orangey color and the berries turn red. It is so pretty and it's actually really beautiful right now after this rain. All of those little water droplets hanging off of those ferns is so magical. I know I've been saying magical a lot this video, but that's kind of really what the garden is this time of year. The next row is another full row of tomatoes. I kind of consider this like our bonus tomato row because these plants are not on drip or anything and they are not trellised super well. Anything we get off of here, I kind of consider it just a bonus to our main production tomatoes. You can see that the plants are really starting to look pretty bad though. There's a lot of disease. And actually here's another one of those artisan blush tomatoes that I was mentioning. This is the color it gets when it's ripe. The flavor is so good on these, but I mean, that plant just looks terrible. And in the back here, you can see a lot of those leaves are starting to brown. The tops of the tomato plants look good, but I'm just not sure how much longer these plants will hold out. So we're just enjoying them while we have them. Next year, we definitely need to plant our tomatoes in a different area because we planted them here last year, and I'm pretty sure the previous owner also planted tomatoes here, so I just wanna plant them in a new place and hopefully that will help with the disease a little bit. The last row is empty right now, and I've covered it with a tarp to try and help keep the weeds down. I think this is where we're going to plant our garlic in the fall, but you can see here this area that hasn't been covered is already taken over by weeds, so I just wanted to keep it covered to try and prevent that as much as possible. And here's a look at all the things that we've picked from the garden today, which is pretty typical of what we're picking every day around here. A ton of cucamelons and a ton of beans. This is definitely a good year of beans for us. We also have a good number of cherry tomatoes down at the bottom of the basket. That evening, we just had such a beautiful sunset. 
Everything had cooled down after the rainstorm and it was just so beautiful. This is why August is my favorite month in the garden. I hope you guys enjoyed looking around our vegetable garden this month and we'll see you again in the next video.